Throat's a little dry, apparently. Greetings, greetings. Happy Sunday, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to this October edition of Lee Chess Plays. You're in the end of October, actually. We have 50 challenges in the queue, or in the pool, rather. We're not going in order, if you recall. But anyone can send a challenge, 3 plus 0, rated or unrated, it doesn't matter. Let's accept a random challenge here and get started. Jesus Christus, good luck. Hello to everyone watching on Twitch as well as YouTube. I have both chats open. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to some fun banter and some tough challenges today. What's up, Nikhil? Hello, Raf33. I see you both in the chat. Uh, yes, Raf, have to challenge to 3 plus 0. That's correct. Take care. Hello, K Buckby. What's up, Malcolm? Cool, Joshua. Hello. How's everyone's weekend going? Let me say hi to the YouTube people as well. I have light mode on right now. That's controversial, I know. <laughs> we may have to get an official ruling from No Joke Chess if he comes in here or people are protesting too much against light mode. But it should more or less be watchable hours for light mode for most people. <laughs> okay, let's go here. We'll pin the knight. Ah, congratulations, Junior Prodigy. Top 500 in the marathon. Yeah, I was playing the auto marathon yesterday on Lee Chess a little bit, too. I popped in just for uh, about 45 minutes or so, maybe an hour. And I think when I was in, there was over 21,000 players. I don't know what the final count was. But uh, we did a little bit of digging. Someone on, in my chat yesterday, and apparently the spring marathon, I'm going to take here because of the pin. No, it was the summer marathon, actually. The summer marathon of this year had something like 31,000 players. So even though the autumn marathon was massive, I, I bet it didn't quite uh, eclipse the summer marathon. Thank you, Berserk. Glad you like this. Hello to Darnaby, also Mika, Jacob, Dan, all on YouTube. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah, we are simultaneously broadcasting on both of those platforms. Let's take this one. This is a convenient move to play because I hit the knight. I also defend c5. Oh, thanks, Tipsy Ton. <laughs> Ooh, blunder of a peace alert looks to me. Always got to be a little careful. You know, I have my queen undefended out here. It is aligned with that black queen on d8, but I don't see any punishment that black is going to be able to administer. What's up, B Buckby? Hey, are we going to get both Buckbees challenging me today? I hope so. Can take this one too. Take with the knight or the queen. Probably take with the knight. Supported. If I took with the queen, there was bishop take c5. So this is the greedier and probably better move. Black can go here, but. Yeah, I mean, even if black manages to win this piece, they're going to be down uh, a full piece. And black doesn't play it. So now I can pull this knight back. I can... Can I try to get fancy here? Take, take, bishop, c4. Mm, completely unnecessary. <clears throat> but I'm tempted to try to make this spectacular in the first game. It, I do control f8 and g8. But uh, I'm not going to calculate it. <laughs> We're just going to play something sensible like this and go after f7. With proper protection on the queen. Can you play a variant? I think we're sticking to standard right now. Yeah, although one of the most clever challenges I ever received. Thank you, Jesus. You're playing this okay, but right around here. Yeah, I think you should hurry to develop your king side. You're a little bit behind, and uh, by the time that I was able to take on c5, you weren't able to recapture. Be nice if you were, capture, you were castled already here. But yeah, one of the most clever challenges I ever received was someone did... A variant position. It was the starting position, but it was black to move from the beginning instead of white. They just set it up that way. And like black played their first move and I was playing white. And I just like replied and I got a, like three moves into the game. This was on one of the Lee chess plays from a few months ago. And 
I backed up. I was like, wait, how am I like down a tempo in a normal opening here? <laughs> so occasionally people sneak those challenges in. I'm going to go here and attack. Now, if I go here, I think there's E5, if I recall. But I'm going to play it anyways. So let's see if we can play it maybe like a gambit. Right, Defuser? Yeah, that was, it was a shock. I had to recover myself mentally. Okay, let's send this up. Hey, GM Shadow. Yeah, good to see you too. Could I play a Queen's Gambit decline with Queen C2, please? Yes, I will be sure to try to do that, Banjo. That is my normal line, actually, in the QGD. So I very much enjoy playing that line. I've had a lot of success with that over the years. Let's play Queen F3. These positions are complicated. I played this type of thing before, and you know, there's a tempting possibility here. All right, this move looks natural, but the problem is this knight was supporting the bishop, and I can capture that knight with check, and I'm going to take the bishop on the next move. So that's a full piece that we're up now. What YouTube video is that game in? Ooh, yeah. I don't think there's anything I can remember about the stream itself. But uh, someone in the chat might be able to find it. It was just one of the Lee Chess plays from previous weeks. I'm pretty sure it was at least three months ago. Okay, let's bring the knight up here. Hit the queen. Ten knights versus a queen. Ooh, yeah. I know Hikaru used to play some of those variants. I could try taking here because this check and then mate on g7, but <clears throat> maybe there's f5 against that. And then I take here. This is kind of a fun move to play too. It, it probably checks out tactically. So let's do it. And it's nice to be able to attack when you're already up a full piece. You have a little bit of leeway. Hello, Prachi. Uh, thanks again, Darnaby says, first time I've caught you live. Yeah, greetings. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in today. Appreciate you spending part of your Sunday with me. What's up, Dan? Ombru. I saw there's this uh, squid chess tournament that Anna Kramling is organizing. And I saw a bunch of people were streaming it. Does anyone know what it entails? Obviously, Squid Game on Netflix has been massively popular. But uh, I wonder what exactly they have planned for it. All right, this is a wipeout. I'm just taking a bunch of pieces. Now, I could take this one, but I kind of like taking this one more, unless there's rook f7 rook here. I think I can play bishop e5 against that. I'm going to do that. This bishop's defended, so no problem there. But rook f7, I'm going to do this, because rook takes d7 can be met by knight f6. We're going to go after the rook. And finally, castle. Move 24. I'm being pretty accurate here, I got to say. All right. Thank you for the game, Oct B. Yeah, that bishop e4 move. I think the game was fine up until then. Probably you should just develop here something like knight bd7. Maybe knight takes h5. I think we're still in somewhat normal territory. Yeah, this game or this position has been played before. I kind of like this line with knight 1e2 because it's not as well explored as the mainline stuff, knight f3, h4. And sometimes in the Karo Khan, you can bother the bishop here. So. I don't think this is the best line for white by any means, but I enjoy playing it like in rapid chess. And if black hasn't seen it or maybe played against it once or twice before, it can be tough. There's all these sacrificial ideas. So I recommend looking into this line if you're looking for a weapon from the white side. Okay, who's up next? Josix, LV. Okay, let's play, let's play D4 in this game. Thank you, Mountain Ren, for tuning in from Colombia. Greetings. Any suggestions on a book about Tall? Yeah, definitely his uh, autobiography. Life and Games. 
of Mikhail Tal. Fantastic book. Probably my favorite overall chess book. Yeah, Miklov put that in the chat too. Great, great book. He was an amazing writer. What do I think about Squid Game? I've seen uh, maybe four episodes now. I like it so far. Yeah, I have been enjoying it. H5, can I just go here? Something about this seems a little wrong for my opponent because usually they'd be attacking this. And if H4 I take and there's this pin, I don't think that's what Black wants. Yeah, Tall was a great writer. Agreed. He conveys the struggle of his uh, world championship matches, his important games, so lucidly. And of course, his, uh, his chess annotations, too, are just top-notch. Like, really impressive. Okay, so this might be the idea. And then maybe, like, knight c6 coming. I don't know if I want to take this, so I'm going to postpone that decision. I don't know. Queen takes h5. There's stuff like knight f5 that rubs me the, the wrong way a little bit. I kind of feel like just developing, so I'm going to play knight f3. Yeah, now take. I still feel like this alignment down the H file should should play to my favor. Let's go knight d4. Have I played Valorant? Nope, I have not. Uh, thank you, by the way, to F Woodbridge for subscribing with Twitch Prime to the Lee Chess channel. I'm sure Lee Chess very much appreciates it. I appreciate it, too, that you're uh, supporting the platform. Lee Chess is a fantastic public chess work. My favorite game other than chess. Hmm. If we're talking board games, I would say Go, even though I'm terrible at it. But I just know based on the depth of Go that I want to learn more about it in the future. Why that move? Were you guys very surprised about Queen D2? <laughs> that looked pretty normal to me. Okay, bishop e6. Now I can think about taking and maybe taking here. Black would have to take with the pawn in that instance. I don't know if I want to give up the uh, dark square bishop, though. Somehow this bishop seems a little overloaded, right? Like I could think about bishop f4. Hmm. Taking is interesting, though. You know what? I'm going to take. I'm going to get rid of that light square bishop. Black is attacking c4 a couple times, so I think I might have to. Any other chess players in my family? No, not really. My dad knows how to play chess, but uh, I've played only a couple games with him in my whole life. All right, I got to speed up a little bit now. Let's take this one. And now I think I will play... I don't know. I guess I'm going to go for the trade. Mainly because I got to speed up. I'm going to try for this and try to win the G4 pawn. Did I ever quit as a kid? No. No, I never uh, got discouraged by chess, so to speak. This move is still... Playable for my opponent, unfortunately for me. Rook f4. Plays that. Okay, let's take it. I'm going to be put to the test on the clock here. That's for sure. I'm at the pawn, though. So we'll see what we can make of this. Trying to expand. All right, I got a little trick in here. To perhaps... 
Uh, I can go night there. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Black playing this well. Probably should have figured that they would attack my <laughs> my attack my bishop. Run knight. <laughs> that was a dirty flag. <laughs> I'm sorry, Josix. You were pushing me on the clock. I had to do it. I had to uh Attempt the flag. I was getting outplayed. That was a good game. Let me think where I could have played this better. Apparently this is not good for black, but I definitely did not punish it. Queen d5. Yeah, queen d5 is sometimes played in these positions to guard this. Just wonder after queen e7. H4, G4, Queen D2, Castles. Okay. Yeah, some subtlety probably required around here that I, I didn't come up with. Oh, Bishop H4 would have been nice. Yeah, Bishop H4, now that I see that. That looks convenient. Black has to play 97, step into a pin. Not good. Oh, Rook takes H6. Wow. That would have been a great shot here. I'm apparently not sufficiently awake enough to even have noticed anything like that. Yeah, knights are important in time scrambles. Absolutely. Yeah, rook takes h6 is cool because, you know how I was mentioning I thought the bishop might be overloaded at times? Black can't take with the bishop because I take here and I get two minors for the, uh, for the rook. And if rook takes h6, there's this nice move, knight f5. And that hits everything in the position. All these pieces are shaky all of a sudden for black. And... I guess I'm going to be winning material here with interest. Yeah, queen g5 and just the calm queen d2, even looking for a queen trade. And the same issues persist for black. Okay, so chances missed, but very good game. Yeah, by the time I traded queens, I don't think white really has much. Black has all these weak pawns, but black can attack down the f file. My e pawn, f pawn turned out to be weak as well. All right, tough one. Azura Christopher, let's go. Uh, let's play in English. C4. What's that chessboard behind you? Which chessboard behind me? Are you talking about the big king? There's a queen on the floor as well, so there are pieces there. But I'm not sure what you mean by chessboard. I used to have a chessboard hung up in my old place. Okay, let's play a uh, Bafanik English. Yep, you'll be in there if you challenge me to casual. Yep. You have a equal likelihood of getting selected randomly if it's casual or rated. Let's play H3. My favorite NBA team. I got to go with my Timberwolves, man. <laughs> I haven't been following them in the last year or two. But, uh, yeah, I still got to root for the hometown team, despite all their issues and the perennial disappointment. <laughs> What's up, Cheese Dan Danish? Hmm. I haven't castled yet, but I think I should castle now. Casual or rated, up to you. Now here, it depends what black does, but one of the main plans is to play either d4 or you can go for f4, f5. And I think in this case, I'm probably going to go for f4, f5 because black's kind of wedged their bishop in here. But if black had started maneuvering for the d4 square, 
I might have gone for D4 to prevent Black from sinking a knight in there eventually. What do I think of the Budapest Gambit? Uh, I think the Budapest Gambit is a near sound gambit. As in... The top players are going to get, I think, a pretty comfortable edge as white. But, you know, it's not going to like lose material permanently or be too bad of a gambit to play for most people. Play knight f4. Ironically, I th my, my feeling with the, with the Budapest gambit, kind of like some gambits, at the very highest level, they're so good at making the gambiteer actually play a passive position that that's probably what you would end up having to uh, do as black is play a passive position over time because they're so good at not necessarily hanging on to the material, but giving it back and forcing you to play defense, even though you're the one trying to initiate all these tricks and play tactically. Yeah, I have not been playing on chess.com lately. That's really for no reason. Mostly because my streaming setup is for Lee Chess and I've been doing Lee Chess plays. And I one thing I, I like about Lee Chess in terms of the playability of it is the arenas. I just really like the arena format. If you look at my streams, I almost always play arenas unless I'm playing viewers. And I just like playing one game after the other in like a competitive format. So I could take here and then go knight c7. I'm just debating what order I want to do this in. I should probably... Hmm, well, I don't know. I'm going to take here first. And I think black should have played knight takes d5. Okay, here though, this is... Black has knight c8. That's actually not completely clear. Or queen c8 after this. Let me think. I can win a pawn, but they're going to take on f5. Trying to figure out some way I can punish that. I don't know. Let's just play it. I have a couple ideas. Hmm. Yeah, and black doesn't even do it. They should have played queen c8. That is for sure. Yep. Yeah, the arenas are on schedule always. Exactly. I like chess.com as well. If I want to play players like around my own rating consistently, I think playing the pools on chess or not the pools, the um, yeah, either the pools or the direct challenges is usually what I will do. But the arena format on Lee Chess is pretty unparalleled for the excitement factor. Okay, I might have to do this at some point. Not sure about King H2 on my part, but I am up upon here. Trying to take over the file. No fork, fortunately. All right, now I'm getting somewhere, finally. My opponent's pretty pinned up. Let's go for this. Mm, I better take that. All right, checkmate. Came down to the wire. Good game to zero, Christopher. Yep. Tough one, tough one. I think even on knight c7, let's check that real quick. Knight c7, if you played queen c8, is it that bad here? Hmm, the engine doesn't give a, the line that I was, I was a little worried about. Here, take, and then take. I was just wondering what happens if... Black goes ahead and takes this pawn. Hmm, knight a7. Yeah, I definitely didn't see that move. 
Seems wrong somehow, though. Queen b7? I don't understand. Knight back to b5? <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't black repeat if they want? Now bishop g5. Little over my head in this position. Oh, knight a7 here, and then take f5 and attack. Allow queen takes b2. No, that can't be right. I think Stockfish is confused. I could take on g6 first. Yes, that is true. However, if I take on g6 first, like let's say I do it here, there's still this issue on h3 now. And actually, that swings the advantage in black's favor. <laughs> Maybe, Soren. Okay, but that was a critical phase of the game. I definitely would have played queen c8 if I were black. Queen d8, I don't think black has a whole lot of compensation here, although it was still a tough game after this, for sure. Thanks for the game. Okay, checkmate, 3-1, 4-1. Another tough opponent here. We're getting some worthy challengers, for sure. You're all worthy, but... Some, uh, some tough competitors. Hello, Basid, by the way. Checkmate, are you there? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, Jacob was asking about my favorite chess book. And yeah, I'd have to go with that book I was mentioning earlier. Life and Games of Mikhail Tall. You are just saying that because I still make big one-move blunders. I'm not worthy. Oh, yeah, we, we accept all people who make blunders here because we all make blunders in chess and in life. <laughs> Let's try to trade this bishop for the knight. Now, how best to arrange my forces? I'm going to play knight a6. I'm going to send this knight to c7 so I can reserve the d7 square for this knight. And the knight on c7, ideally will help in play, playing a6 and b5. That's the plan here. Okay, so he wants to trade bishops rather than get the bishop pair. Fair. So let's do this. And white's going to have a bit of a space advantage, to be fair. But uh, we'll see what we can do here. Knight d3. Maybe I'll even play knight b4. Maybe I'll play this. This looks kind of interesting. Could also send this back here and try for the B5 plan, but we'll see if I can get white to part with this. Do I listen to music when I play generally? No, I usually don't. If I'm playing by myself, I might. But uh, these days, almost all the playing I do online, safe to say, yeah, virtually 100% of the playing I do online, I do on stream. Okay, this is an interesting maneuver now. I'd also take and play 95, but I kind of like this. And uh, yeah, I just don't want to mess with the DMCA stuff. If there's clarity about DMCA and um, I want to switch it up a little bit, I may, I may start doing some music, not on like a Leech S play stream, but on my personal channel. I'm mostly a classic rock guy. If I were to pinpoint a genre, that's my favorite. Okay, b5, take, pawn takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes, rook takes a2. I don't like that resulting position. b5, take, I could take with the knight. Maybe I'll do that. Now, I'm not so scared about this move order because I can take with the pawn, hit the knight. That's going to disrupt any sequence white has on b5. So yeah, I think take this way, which also opens the bishop. This is starting to look more like a Benko gambit, but a good version of it for black. Hello, babies 2021. Am I returning to my main channel? Yep, I have been streaming on my main channel um, pretty actively in recent uh, weeks. Let's take and play queen a5. Hit this, hit this. Is Black Sabbath considered classic rock? I don't know. What do you guys think? I like some Black Sabbath.
Hello to Tarak on YouTube. Yeah, but said I'm going to try to come back to YouTube soon. Don't worry. Hello, Jerry, by the way. Good to see you, Jerry. Uh, not Chess Network, a different Jerry, but shout out to Chess Network as well. <laughs> this is a Jerry that I know. All right, C4, Knight B4. I don't like that. I don't want to give the Knight any inroads. So I'm thinking Queen here. And maybe sneak this knight up. Yeah, maybe knight b6, knight c4. Rook b1, mm, admittedly kind of annoying for me. Knight b6, queen here. Or rook there, rather. The f5 somewhere. Mm, kind of weakening. I have an idea, though. Let's go here. Here, here, I'm going to be hitting the e-pawn, and also I might be able to play knight c4, or even c4, under some circumstances. Yeah, I like the Beatles. I grew up listening to the Beatles a lot. Uh, shout out to my dad if he's listening. <laughs> he played a lot of Beatles in the car when, when I was a kid. Probably just take this pawn now. Okay, now I'm thinking, hmm, we're going to be in a time scramble here, but let's see what we can do. Just trying to defend for the moment. Consolidate my two extra pawns. Okay, this is a winning end game. We're golden. Check. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Good game check, mate. Yeah, tough one. I think your position just got a little too shaky. I think allowing that maneuver of the knight to the d4 square hurt you. Yeah, otherwise, I think you got like a typical slight space advantage here. I don't know about knight e1. You should probably just play h3 or bishop f4. This looks like a fairly normal Benoni scenario where you're going to get the bishop pair. But... I'm managing to trade my light square bishop for the knight here, which is usually what black wants to do in the Benoni. So, hey, Mark John. Yeah, glad you like that maneuver. All right, interesting one. Yeah, tough opponents here. Thanks again, everyone tuning in. I'm going to be going for the, the next hour and a half. We still got a long ways to go here. So pour yourself a nice drink, coffee, whatever your drink of choice is, tea. If you're more into spirits or whatnot, you know, settle in. We'll be here a while. There's a lot of chess streaming going on today, so I'm sure you have plenty of choices. Should I play this line again? H4, H6, knight e2, knight f4. Mm, okay, now this is inaccurate. And I think knight e2 gains in value because the h5 pawn is going to be a liability for black. Still rocking the Starbucks. I, um, I usually get coffee in my building now. But I still do go to Starbucks. Yeah. Nowadays, I'm more likely to get some food at Starbucks, though, if I go. <laughs> like a pastry or something. All right. So I can just take this pawn, as far as I can tell. And let's take it this way. Are you guys okay with light mode? I know there's a couple people who've been... Uh, Asking for dark mode, but what do you guys think? No, it, it's always, if I'm in light mode, people are asking for dark mode. It's rarely the other way around. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you guys what. We're going to do 25 more minutes of light mode, and then we'll go to dark mode for the second half of the stream. I think that's fair, right? This will induce F5. 
Now, I want to be sneaky and maybe come back here, but I feel like that's going to be too obvious and a little too ticky-tack, so I'm going to go queen e2. Yellow mode. Dark mode is the best. Dark mode ASAP. Thank you, Cheese Danish. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, we'll go dark mode in the second half of the stream. Coming up. 25 minutes away. Ooh, this is going to be painful for a Corinthian man. Take f5 with check. It's pinned. Where to put the king? Now, if you're following this rule that to escape a knight check, you want to keep your king two squares away diagonally from the knight, then probably best to play king d7. Oh, yeah, it could be Danish. Yeah, there's a random e thrown in there, isn't there? That's what's throwing me off. <laughs> okay, king here. Now knight d6. I can go after b7. Ah, there's queen takes g2, I suppose. I got to think about. I might just go back here. And then castle this way if allowed. All right. Maybe this. It'd be nice to play king b1 just so there's no uh, queen f4 check. But this is actually still a pretty big threat because of the threat on e6 as well. So king c7 would be a natural move here. But then I will play knight g5. And it's going to be trouble for my opponent. Did I look at king takes f5 before trading the bishops? You probably mean knight takes f5 before trading the bishops. Ah, yeah, I could have done it here too. That's right. Could have been stronger. I don't know. Now, a little trap. If here... Nah, he might have been able to play that, actually. Although I could still go... No, I couldn't go knight g5. g3, he would have queen takes e4. Okay, here, though, is going to run into this problem. Ooh, big time fork. Mm, gather some material now. Have I noticed the ICC pun, pun intended board plus pieces set theme on chess.com? Yeah, exactly. I think that is a shout out to the Internet Chess Club, right? This knight leaves. I'm going to go queen c7. All right. Corinthian man, thank you for the game. Yeah, so this is why you don't want to play h5 in this position. You want to go h6, keep that pawn a little bit further back. And yeah, h5, I think the pawn just becomes a target real quickly. There's already two white pieces on it, the knight, also the queen. And I think this, this maneuver, as I said, gains in value. Hard for black to keep it together after that. So thanks for the game. Okay, Danby, you're up. Good luck. Let's play knight f3 in this game. What is my fide? I think I'm 2446 fide. I believe my peak was something like 2479. That's the highest I've been. I've been playing chess since I was in second grade, since I was, I think, eight years old, roughly. And I'm 35 now. All right. Let's try for this not-so-subtle threat. Queen e1, although it looks awkward, standard move in these positions. I've talked about this before, but the reason you want to think about queen e1 instead of rook e1, my opponent's going to fall right into it, is that if you get to execute this move and they go bishop g4, there's no pin you have to worry about. If my queen was here and my rook was here, bishop g4, e5 would not be good because black could play knight takes e5. But here, e5, I can play it. There's no pin from the bishop. So a little trick in those positions. Is breaking 2,500 a goal for me? I would love to, but I'm not really playing over the board at the moment. 
I'm toying with the idea of playing the U.S. Masters at the end of November. So <clears throat> there's a possibility I'll play that. It's like November 24th through the 28th or something in North Carolina. A lot of strong players playing. So I'm thinking about that, but uh, yeah, I just have not been like prepping my openings or studying. I would need to get into gear to do that. Yep, that is a norm eligible tournament. It is. Actually, a pretty good tournament for uh, norm purposes because of all the title players. It's what they call a super Swiss as well. So there's no uh, requirements to play a certain amount of federations. We could go into all the nuances of what FIDE requires for norms at length. But one of the, the big requirements is that you play a certain amount of players from different federations than your own. And that can actually be a problem sometimes in tournaments because you, know, you might just get paired by happenstance with a bunch of players from a single country or the country where the tournament's taking place. But in a Super Swiss, they waive that requirement. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm so like, stuffed up right now. I'm not sick or anything. <clears throat> but in a Super Swiss, they waive that requirement because of the strength of the field and the amount of international players already in it. Some combo of that. Federation meaning just different countries? Exactly. Like whatever uh, federation that you have in your FIDE profile. And it's by country, yes. Mm, let's go here. I want to start trying to make some inroads against this pawn structure. It is in Charlotte, yes. Shout out to Charlotte, North Carolina. And my good friends at the Charlotte Chess Center. Okay, uh, queen c2. Maybe I can induce e4. I'm not even sure I want to induce this move, but maybe then I go f4. All right, black's trying to advance all these pawns in tandem. Yeah, I think Danby's doing a good job with their structure just to create some counter chances. Their, their pieces are nicely centralized. I got to break this down. I have been to Scandinavia, yes. Actually, I was in Norway right when the pandemic started last year. <clears throat> John, you should put YouTube chat right next to Twitch chat. Hello, Patrice, by the way. <laughs> I see you in both chats. Yeah, I've got my YouTube over here, my Twitch over here. I run out of monitor room otherwise. Yeah, Tarek, send me a challenge. Absolutely. In Norway as a tourist or for chess reasons? So I was actually over there at the time. Um, I had the amazing fortune in, to record with Magnus Carlsen for uh, the website that I co-founded, Chessable. So that was what I was doing right basically when the pandemic started. And we had wrapped up recording, fortunately. and. Um, you know, the Chessable team, everyone was heading home. I was actually spending a couple days extra in Norway, so we had already wrapped up. But um, yeah, as soon as like it became clear that the pandemic was affecting travel, I immediately got a flight back to the U.S. All right, Danby, thank you for the game. So little trick right there. Yeah, got to watch the E4 move. And when you have two minor pieces like that with one square in between, it's susceptible to a fork. So that's what happened. So you probably should play something like in this position after queen e1, maybe the preemptive bishop g6 or maybe bishop g4. Move like that. Yeah, I had to throw in the little rook takes e4, get rid of the knight, and then knight g5 at the end. Oh, thank you, D-Web. Yeah, there's a funny video on my channel of me and Magnus where he took the 100 end games you must know quiz. Good luck, AMC Water. Team Scandy, here we go. Why do I love the Scandy so much? I've just been playing it for so long. 
I've likened it to, uh, you know, putting on your favorite jacket or something. It just feels like home to me, you know? Okay, this is not a good move. Bishop g4 is more accurate, but let's see what AMC water does. Thanks, Dredginho. Uh, Noob Sane asked earlier, what do I think about the Semislav Bafinik variation? Fascinating line, but unfortunately, it's just dominated by computer analysis. And it has been for a long time. But very interesting line. Dynamic, opposite side castling. Tunnel lines that go 25, 30 moves plus deep, though. And I think according to theory, black can eventually equalize, but you really got to know your stuff. Ooh, AMC water, that's a bishop. You're not worried about any discoveries leaving the queen on a5 under the x-ray. Yeah, so that's one thing. If you play the queen a5 Scandi, you do have to get used to that. The bishop on d2 staring at your queen. And just always understanding where you're going to retreat the queen. It's usually not a problem unless knight d5 is a threat. Because that would hit the queen as well as c7. But until knight d5 um, is a threat, black usually doesn't have to worry about it. Because knight d5 can be met by queen takes d5 in a lot of instances, but if there's like a white bishop on c4, then yeah, you really got to be heads up and understand what's going on. Okay. Now, I could try to play something like h5, h4. You know what? Let's try it. Let's see if white goes g3 to attempt to trap my bishop. Otherwise, we're just going to shove the h-pawn down there. And I still will shove the H-pawn, even if G3 is played. Could take here, too. That's awfully tempting, but, you know, let's, let's try this. Let's see how this turns out. Ooh, okay, take. Yes, and unfortunately for AMC Water, this is going to be checkmate very soon. Queen H2 coming. Said misclick, LOL. What was the misclick? Oh, you probably meant to take the bishop. <laughs> oh, drop that piece on accident. Okay. Knight c4? Yeah. Probably got to play something like knight takes d7 here. Thank you for the game. Here we go. Jasio. Let's play... Hmm. I know someone was asking about a QGD. So it requires a little cooperation from black, but... I'll try to play a little D4. Do you ever play the GPA? Is that the Grand Prix attack? Let's get four pawns up here. I have a feeling my opponent's trying to play this hippo setup. This might be a good example, hopefully, of how to play against this line. Yeah, they're going to try to do this. Okay, now I tell my students this all the time. If you see your opponent playing in this way, don't be shy in getting multiple pawns up to the fourth rank. Three, even four pawns like I'm doing can make your life a lot easier because when you play a move like this, e5, it's so helpful when it comes with more uh, protection from the, from the side with one of these flank pawns. A central break or a break of any kind, it even gives you extra possibilities of breaks. That's how you eventually create problems for your opponent in this type of setup. So yeah, Black's already doing some pretty sketchy stuff here, I would say, g5. I can play f5 maybe. I can uh, take on d6 first. I don't think I actually want to take g5. I'm thinking f5 is probably the way forward here. Let's do that. Yeah, the hippo. That's right. Uh, to your question about the Grand Prix attack, I usually don't play that from the white side. I played it a couple times. It's interesting. I usually play open Sicilian, uh, C3 Sicilian, sometimes Smith Mora. I don't play a lot of closed or Grand Prix, Grand Prix attack, but from the black side, I do get it. What was my biggest chess success? My best chess memory is definitely um, winning the National High School Tournament here in the U.S. when I was in my first year of high school, when I was in ninth grade. My freshman year. Ooh, now I can do this. Oh, avert your eyes. If you're squeamish, look away.
yeah, that was a fantastic memory because uh, it was such a huge event and it was my first time playing it in the open section. And I went 7-0 and, oh, and I won the tournament outright. That's right, peaked early. <laughs> Oof, yeah. So Black had to play the move, I think, G takes F3 here. And then I was debating if I should take the knight or if I should take here. Let's, let's check that out real quick. If take here... Okay, I saw the computer evaluation down there. This is plus eight. The engine says don't play either. <laughs> knight D5, bishop E4. Knight D5, wow. Yeah, Black is balancing on a knife's edge here and probably teetering off the cliff in many ways. But that is my big picture advice to those of you who struggle against these, you know, these openings where your opponent sits back. They can do this with black or white. It's usually black is the one doing it, but sometimes players play like this as white. When they sit back with their pawns on the sixth, the third rank, don't be shy. Get multiple pawns up here out in the center. There was actually a pivotal game in the U.S. Women's Championship, and I believe the second to last round, so uh, Carissa Yip won the tournament with flying colors. In one of the critical rounds, second to last round, a penultimate round, she played um, uh, Nazi Pakidze, or Pakidze, and she's a former U.S. women's champion, like strong player. And Carissa played this hippo setup as black. And Nazi only put the two pawns up here on E4, D4, didn't use the C or the F pawns. And if you go look at that game, you'll see that White really struggled to find a plan when she did that. It's not that that's like automatically a mistake. She has chances, but I really believe against these setups, you should get one, one or possibly both of the C and F pawns involved in the position. It just makes your life so much easier. So that's my chess PSA when <laughs> fighting against those setups. Hey, Patricia, okay. 2308, let's go. Ever played Luke Van Welly? I have not, no. I played next to him in a tournament, though. The 2011 US Open. I played right next to him. And I played a, uh, the black side of a Sicilian. And after the game, he actually... I didn't know him at all. He actually asked me why I played one move instead of a different move. He's a really nice guy. Okay, we might have a similar type of thing. Bishop here, I might go queen e8. We'll see. Okay, Patricia's sitting back a little bit. He is a Night Orf player, yeah. He is a legendary Sicilian player. Back in the 90s, he was always involved in those Sicilian battles. Let's still go Queen E8. I'll still try to go here. Have I considered adding the Portuguese Gambit to your Scandi? I, I played that every once in a while. I actually used to play a fair amount of knight f6 on move two in my younger years. But um, I've said this before. The reason I don't really like those lines as much is most people don't take the gambits these days. And it's not as fun. Okay, let's go a5. Who knows why I'm playing a5? Looks like an odd move, right? Unless you're familiar with ideas here. Thank you, Kathleen, by the way, on YouTube. I am playing a5 in order to control the b4 square. I want to play knight c5, perhaps, or at least have that option, but not get kicked away by b4. Yes, very good, pass pawn. Yep, dark mode's coming up. I still got six more minutes of light mode. <laughs> Okay, so I like my position here. Next, I'm probably going to move this knight and play for f5 over time. Um, yeah, let's go here. f5 on the way. I feel like Patricia is struggling for a plan. I feel like he's not quite sure what to do in this position. Maybe here now, and now I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to control the g5 square before going for f5. 
All right. I feel like f3 is coming. I can check here. I can get the bishop deep in the position if I want. Ooh, this is very much looking like a King's Indian now. Am I still unbeaten on Lee chess plays? No, not by any means. I've lost twice, I think. And my first loss was a long time ago at this point, maybe three or four months ago. Okay, so this should be good for me. Let's see what happens. Queen e5, maybe? But also take... Taking might just win a pawn, right? Take, rook takes, and then knight takes or king takes? Probably king takes. Yeah, let's just do that. I don't really see how white's going to get the pawn back easily. They're pretty tied up here because of the logjam of pieces here. Mainly this knight not being able to go anywhere. Now, important motif. If white ever plays a3, I'm, I'm probably going to play a4 in reply. So b4 can be met by en passant. Let's bring this up. Do you remember that legendary computer blue screen? Are you talking about last week? Yeah, my comp blue screened like right at the start of the stream for Lee Chess Plays. Should I be greedy? Eh, I can take e4 if I do that. Let's just go king g7. Still real tough for white to, white to maneuver here. Bring the rook over. Knight c2. I'd really like my knight to go to f5. That would be perfect right about now. Okay, I guess he can go knight d4 in the near future. So what should I do? <clears throat> it's not an easy way to break this position down. Because my pieces are a little bit boxed in at the moment. Well, I think first of all, I'm going to offer a queen trade. I don't expect him to take me up on it. But let's see what he does. Does do it. Okay. Yeah, he's not playing the way I would have predicted. I thought he was going to go to d4. I guess he wants to blockade, though. Still up a pawn. However... The time situation is the far bigger thing in the position. Um, let's get the king up now. Let's go king here. Defend the pawn. Attack. Check. Go take. All right, take the free rook. Thank you for the game, Patrice. Yeah, you were just pretty passive, I'd say, going into the middle game. I think this uh, kind of slow-moving plan for me. Play knight here, a5, knight d7, f5. I think you need to get your pawns engaged a little more somehow. If it were me, I probably would have left this pawn on, on e3 and tried to play like b3, a3, b4 gradually. But admittedly, it takes some time. All right, we will go to dark mode because people are vehemently anti-light mode. Like most people don't really mind, but <laughs> as you can see, when you're streaming, light mode is almost uh, unstreamable unless you want to deal with comments from people. I don't really mind because I'm used to it now, but I just think it's an interesting phenomenon. <laughs> Okay, Pifaria. I know, have to change my shirt, yeah. Let's play Ari Lopez against Pifaria. I'll play a main line, Bishop A4. I do like to take on C6 as well. The exchange Rui, I think, is very interesting. Okay, this is a line I haven't faced in a while. The open Spanish. Okay, um, how do they play it these days? C3 or knight bd2? Let's go knight bd2 right away.
Do I like Ultra Bullet? Haven't played it in a long time. I'm too slow for it. No, I just I just get stressed when I play Ultra Bullet. <laughs> I don't mind this trade here. This is a pretty high quality line for black, I gotta say. Uh, I'm going to maneuver. I think this would make for like a good mainline choice at a higher level, repertoire wise. I think it's real tough for white to break this down. Black knows what they're doing. Hmm. Let's continue with knight g3. Continue with the standard maneuver. What do I think of the Petrosian system for the King's Indian defense? Pretty good. Yeah. No, this is not my channel by any means. This is the official Lee Chess channel, leechess.org, the second largest chess site. And I am just doing uh, some streaming for them on a weekly basis, along with other streamers too, just playing viewers and hanging out. Okay, uh, Bishop H6. Let's take the opportunity to do that with tempo. Maybe knight here now. Take, I can take with the pawn. Looks decent. Would I recommend against the Scandinavian? I definitely think you should take the pawn on d5. That's the only try for an advantage for white. You might want to look into the three knight f3 lines, assuming black plays queen takes d5. I think those lines are underrated. Even within knight c3, there's some very interesting stuff. But um, you probably want to depart a bit from the usual. A lot of people just kind of mindlessly develop against the Scandinavian. Don't do that. Okay. This knight, I feel like, needs to be improved. To where? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm thinking... Maybe take and then send it up here, or maybe F4. F4 actually looks pretty thematic here. Let's do that. F5 could be annoying for my opponent sometime in the future. Might just play it on the next move, especially if black has to go here or here. Maybe black will sack a pawn. Knight B7. Fianchetto knight, usually not good. Let's play F5. Even as a pawn sack, I think we must play this move. before black plays like f5 or something. And now queen h5 definitely comes to mind. Looks pretty natural. Let's do it. Watch h7. That pawn could be a liability. In fact, I think if black plays f4, I'm already in the clear to play bishop takes h7. We could be seeing a mate on the g7 square soon. Against the Scandinavian, John recommends the Scarlet Trader shirt. <laughs> I think I can do this. Take and then check here. Followed by bishop f6, depending upon where the king goes. If it goes to g7, I play queen h6, then bishop f6. I think that checks out. Could also just play this. But uh, let's be forceful here. Any quicker way to do this? I mean, bishop f8, king g8, not seeing it, so... Yeah, I want my bishop to help deliver the mate is the thing. So it's going to assist in an ideal world. So king g8, bishop here, threatening queen h8. And I just don't see how black's going to get back in time to cover the g7 square. Yeah, because now I go check. Could also play queen h6 maybe, but nice to do it with check. And that pawn on f6 is super helpful. Thanks for the game, Pafaria. Yeah, I think you ran into some difficulties in the middle game, probably around here. Maybe you should just take this knight. 
Play takes, pawn takes, knight d7. Definitely your knight ending up on b7 was not good. I feel like this position's already pretty much winning for white. Yeah, f5 is too strong here. Ooh, not good when the engine says that you got to just let me take the bishop on e6. Knight d8, a3. Yeah, this, this is too hard to defend. This is plus a million. Ooh, bishop g7 is the best move here. Bishop g7. Got to say, I didn't consider that at the time. <laughs> but I think if you're white, you can kind of take your pick at this point. Bishop takes h7 is up there as well. Mate in 10, mate in 17. Now mate in 14. It's, it's crunching the numbers. Oh, I'm drinking my coffee here. I got it. <laughs> what about here? Yeah, bishop g5. Nice little mating pattern. And if king g7, I was going to go check. Force the king back and then play here. And yeah, it's going to be made on one of these squares. Most likely g7. Okay. Thank you for the game. Ladderman. 1525. Let's do it. What level would I suggest students should be before playing blitz time controls? You can definitely feel free to play blitz, even if you're actively working on your improvement and you're lower rated. I would just recognize, hello Flatterman, are you there? I would just recognize that you're probably not going to get much better playing blitz exclusively. Treat blitz more as a fun thing and maybe as like an indication if you're being tactically aware or you're practicing correct habits in your longer games. It'll probably manifest itself in blitz. Sorry, Flatterman, we got to move on. Who's up next? Big Rich, hello. I saw you in the chat. Let's do this. Let's play F4 on this one. Where are my bird players at? Pawn F4. Play a reverse Leningrad. Yeah, definitely rapid and classical is what you want to focus on. Bird is the word, indeed. Mm hmm. I feel like I should let my opponent do this because I have a little trap I'm going to try to spring. That bishop is hanging. That's one thing about pushing the f-pawn. The f-file might be somewhat likely to open up. Let's go here. Wouldn't reverse Leningrad be sending it up on the queen side? No, Leningrad duches when, like in the, in the Dutch itself, when black plays f5, knight f6, g6. Do you mean just like the mirror image over here? I don't, I don't think that's quite the case. Let's take this one. I'm going to be a little bit greedy here, but it looks pretty good. Karakhan Slav. I do play a fair amount of Slav, and I play Karakhan every once in a while, yeah. I can perhaps try to work that in. All right, now I just need to get developed. Let's play D3. These are a little bit loose, but like Queen D6, I think I can play uh, Queen F3 or maybe Rook F5 check. Karo Khan is a rich man Scandinavian. <laughs> there are some who would agree with you. I like to say that they're brothers. They don't worry about which one's richer or more well off in life. They just have the same structural themes to them. They just appreciate that about one another. I actually think of the Scandinavian as a more streamlined Karakhan in some ways. Because in the Scandi, if you play it, especially the queen takes d5 versions, 
you're very likely to get the position after e4, d5, e takes d5, queen takes d5, knight c3 in like a huge percentage of your games. Probably just spitballing for um, a wide rating range. Probably 75% or more of your games will reach that position. Whereas in the Karokan, after e4, uh, c6, d4, d5, think about all the lines white has available. They can play e takes d5, which a lot of people do at the lower levels. They can play e5. A lot of people do that as well at the lower levels. And at the higher levels, the advanced variation of the Karokan is considered, I think, the best try for an advantage. And then there's knight c3 or knight d2 if white wants to keep the tension. So there's more branches in the Karokan, whereas in the Scandi, it's more streamlined where, again, like you, you're you very likely to get that position after the knight hits c3 on move three. So one nice aspect of the uh, Scandi is the predictability of it from the black side and knowing that you're probably going to have way more experience in those positions than your opponent is. Why doesn't anybody play QGD? Is it so bad and unpopular? QGD is definitely super popular. Uh, it's considered a very solid opening at the higher levels. Um, I think at the, at the elite level, although it does get played, they consider it to be kind of passive for black. So they might prefer other defenses, but it still gets, gets played a fair amount. It especially gets played if the opponent um, can't go for the exchange variation. So if white is committed to like knight f3, then it gets played more often. Oh, nice, cheese Danish. Yeah, that was the approach of my Scandinavian course on Chessable. Straightforward. Okay, Big Rich, thanks for the game. Yeah, that F6, E5 plan is just a no-go with the Rook on F1. So I think if you're going to commit to this setup, probably you want to go E6, Knight F6, maybe Queen D7 and try for Bishop H3. Good attempt to castle along and make it real sharp. But I uh, can't open the position that fast. Even if you take with the pawn. Pawn takes, pawn takes. I was ready to play Knight takes E5 with the discovery. Thank you for the game. Killer rectangle. Let's do this. Yeah, there's a, a slight delay, probably 10, 15 seconds, I would say. Would I say the Scandi is refuted in Super GM levels? No, I, I don't think so. I just think that the risk-reward is probably not there for most of the top-level players. And remember, in like elite tournaments, especially classical tournaments, the general strategy is play to equalize as black. Most top GMs don't try to unbalance the position with the black pieces if they don't have to. Hello, Numeroid. Greetings. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, let's play the standard con setup here. That's the Sicilian I'm currently employing. E6, A6. Yeah, the QGD is uh, a classic opening at the World Championship level, that's for sure. I would bet historically the QGD is the most popular opening seen in World Championship play. I think that's actually pretty safe to say. Maybe, maybe the Rue Lopez. But there's been so many QGD games in World Championship uh, past. Greetings, half full Nelson. Yeah, I hope we get a game. We're, we're still going here for another 45 minutes. So still some chances. I've been playing viewers a little bit on my streams too lately. So uh, hope to catch you on there as well. All right, so I'm winning two pawns here, but I got to watch the dark squares. That's one thing about this opening. By putting these pawns on light squares, black really has to make sure these squares are, are short up. So I cannot relax at all. 
Let's castle here. The knight's defended right now, which is good. I'm going to try to push with these pawns in the center next, I think. Yeah, one month away from Magnus versus Nepo. Get ready, guys. I think Magnus is going to win, going to win the match. Not an unpopular prediction. What do you guys think? Remember, it's 14 games instead of 12. So 14 classical games. This now might be a threat with E4 on the way. Yeah, I know. Pretty hot take, right? <laughs> you think it's going to go to tie breaks? Ooh. Just like the previous World Championship match, huh? That's crazy to think about. The last World Championship match was in 2018. Carlson Caruana. I was there. I got to go there for a couple of the games in London. It was super cool. Should I play E5? Nah. I got to respect the pin that my opponent is putting me in. Killer rectangle. Like bishop d7, knight b3 could be a annoying move. So I think I should either reinforce, maybe just move my queen too. I might just move the queen. Let's go here. Not exactly sure where to put it. Got to keep it somewhere where it's defending the knight. But I got to also watch a bishop coming here. So. Yeah, I agree. You wouldn't think it would be a draw heavy world championship. But, you know, the draw ratio is pretty high historically in these, in these matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well before COVID, 2018. Crazy. Neon is going to prep with Dota. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of classical games, right? 14 games. Okay, okay. I think I'm just going to develop. Killer Rectangle getting real low on time. Bishop f4, I can play e5 maybe. I'm okay with trades here. I'm up two pawns. The trades are A-OK -okay by me. So he avoids them. Let's go here. Take that with check. Yeah, and I, I think this position probably is going to be a gradual win for black, but it's opposite color bishops would still take a little bit of work here. So thanks to the game killer rectangle. That's one thing about the con is you got to watch this early bishop b4. Sometimes a black can play this against the knight on c3, attack it, threaten knight takes e4. One thing I like about the con, you know, I'm kind of riffing on some opening stuff. I tell this to my students a lot who are looking for a Sicilian to play. The con is one line of the Sicilian where white can't really castle queenside effectively. In most every other open Sicilian line, white has a potentially dangerous plan of castling queenside. In the con, though, you rarely see it. So, for example, knight c3, black posts this queen here. Black controls the d5 and b5 pawns. And if white plays the standard plan, bishop e3, queen d2, castles, f3, g4, it doesn't work so well because black's already jumping on the position with bishop b4, hitting the knight on c3 twice, queen d2, knight e4, threatening knight takes e4, and let's say white sticks to the script script here with f3. Now black can play d5, and there's just already these immediate tactical issues in the center. Yeah, accelerated dragon as well. That's another one where white may not be advised to castle queenside. Uh, and white already has to be quite careful here. Uh, their best move is actually to take and allow this uh, triple attack on the knight and then retreat with knight e2 to try to cover it because there's been so many games that have gone bishop d3, and now black wins a piece. This is one of the main traps you learn in the con. e5, knight moves, and then d4 with the fork. So black can kind of front run white's attempts to castle queenside, and create problems for white based on the pin knight and the shakiness of white center. So something to think about if you're looking for a Sicilian line. 
the con is underrated, I think, and it doesn't get played at the top level as much. It's not considered quite as reliable as, you know, Nidorf, uh, Sveshnikov, those types of lines. But look at the stats at amateur level and even at my level. I mean, it's virtually indistinguishable in terms of the percentages. Are you there, Bloodbath? All right. I don't think Bloodbath is there. Let's go to the next challenger. Yeah, thanks again to everyone for challenging. We're never able to get close to the amount of people challenging uh, in terms of the number of games, but great to see everyone. Let's play a Smith Mora. Thanks again to all the viewers. We always get some healthy viewership for these on YouTube and Twitch. The Caro is all pawns and no hope. <laughs> nice Queen's Gambit line right there. Okay, let's think about this. I think I go Queen E2, Rook D1. Sven is playing one of the more reliable setups against the Smith Mora here. Let's see what I can do in terms of attacking this. All right, quick E5. So now this is a little bit of a weakness. I don't think I can do anything direct right now, so probably going to retreat. Knight f6. Now what? Knight d5? Or do I want to hold off on that? I know b4 is sometimes played in these positions. Let's play b4. I have some ideas here. Oh, thanks, Scrubberino. b5 is the answer. Okay, okay. Good move, I think. Let's go here. This is one of these lines where I may not be getting compensation. I might not be getting sufficient play, but we shall see. <clears throat> I'm trying to play it strategic, but I am just down a pawn in the middle. And black's not taking, not letting me get my knight up here. That's a little ticky tack at this point. If knight took on b4, I was thinking about playing either rook b1 or maybe bishop f7, queen c4. Although black does have d5 there. Ooh, my opponent takes. All right, so I probably want to take with the knight. Now watch bishop, bishop b6. That's a major threat now. Maybe black can cower with queen e8, but it's uncomfortable for black to say the least. That's true, cheeseburger. Yeah, you can take the first pawn and then transpose into an Alapin. You can play knight f6. That's one legit way to decline the Smith Mora. Absolutely. Ooh, queen e8. All right, so that preempts my bishop b6 move. However, I have other options. I can go knight b6 maybe. I can maybe try to attack this pawn in the long run, like takes, and then queen d2. I'm going to try to give him something to think about here and also here with this. See what black does. Okay. Yeah, so now if I want, I can pull the e-break here and, and uh, take on e7. Feels kind of lame, but I think I'm going to have some pressure even after that. I think I should do it. I hate to give up my... Beautifully outposted knight, but this still looks pretty good. The bishop can't go here. Well, you can try, but <laughs> Malcolm, if you're there, I, I wasn't trying to predict that move. I was just pointing out that black can't play that move without losing a piece. <laughs> I, I know you would like that one, Malcolm. I will say, I do have a very good track record of like pointing out how people might blunder and that actually taking place in games. <laughs> I think it's because I'm a chess coach and I'm like so used to working with players and, you know, uh, various rating ranges, especially like under 2000. And people do make fairly predictable types of blunders, like once you notice the patterns. Right, Defuser? That's right. <laughs> Which is funny when I make those types of blunders, too. It happens every once in a while.
Mm-hmm. Yep. Is there a rating range you think one should get a coach? I think it depends a lot on your goals. Um, you can benefit from a coach at any level. And in fact, if I make another uh, Grandmaster run, I'm going to try to hire someone, especially for like opening prep. So I just think of a coach as mainly a person who can uh, accelerate your progress, give you actionable feedback. And, you know, that could be relevant at any rating level. Someone you can benefit from, you know, their wisdom since they've been there before and, you know, know like the psychological things that you struggle with in chess. Thanks for the game, Sven. Yeah, this was a pretty reliably played line by you. I think there's going to be a lot of games in this. Yeah, I should really look into this variation a little bit more. Bishop d7 isn't played so often, but it looks fine. Engine says it's fine. I got him to play e5, but I really didn't get a whole lot here. Maybe knight e5 earlier. Yeah, b4. Eh, not the best move. I think if black kind of sat tight a little bit, they were fine. And maybe can play knight takes b4 here. But yeah, I personally, I think, Sven, you probably shouldn't play this move. If you don't play that, I have some compensation. You can tell by the eval. Otherwise, you know, if there was no comp for the pawn, the engine might be showing minus one. But I think this was premature. Thank you for the game, though. Tough one. Waite, let's do this. Good luck. Who would be your dream coach? Say, maybe among a top 20 player. Ooh, a top 20 player. Interesting. Let me think about that. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think who stylistically would be good for me. I'd actually like to work with someone dynamic because that's not my style. I'm more strategic. I enjoy accumulating advantages and converting them over time. So I'm also thinking who would be a potentially good coach who could convey, you know, actionable information to me. Nepo, Duda, maybe, I don't know. Maybe Aronian. I feel like Aronian would be a good coach for me. Because he's, you know, he's definitely on the older end of the age spectrum. So he's, he's got a ton of wisdom. He's been at the top for so long. I feel like he would have a lot of relevant information. And I also think he would be a pretty good coach. I'd love to work with Danya as well. But Danya is not in the top 20. But yeah, of all like the streamers and people like you guys might be aware of having watched them. Yeah, Danya is probably the guy I'd love to work with too. For the same reason. He just has a skill set that I could learn a lot from. Danya's top 20 in our hearts. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm playing the Yugoslav variation against the dragon. Okay, now e5. e5 usually does not get played in the dragon because for one thing, you block the dragon bishop. But think about the d6 pawn. Because you've fianchettoed, you don't have as much natural uh, defense of that pawn as you normally would in other lines of the Sicilian. There are tons of variations of the Sicilian where it's totally fine to play d6 and e5 and go for this like Boleslavsky structure. But the dragon is not one where e5 is likely to be any good. Okay. I think my knight is all right to leave on d6 for the time being. I'm just going to play this move. I'll think about taking here at some stage. Maybe knight takes f7 if it ever works. Oh, yeah, Leiko would be a great coach, too. Yeah, exactly. And he does some coaching, for sure. I think Leiko would be awesome to work with. He seems like a great dude. I really enjoy his commentary. I think he's one of the best commentators out there. He has a great balance. I'm going to take this now, so rook d8 isn't a problem. He has a great balance between instruction and accessibility. 
and lots of personal anecdotes. He knows when to mix in stories, uh, when not to go too far down the rabbit hole for viewers. Yeah, he's awesome. Black has a little bit of compensation here, by the way. Like knight d4. I think if black plays knight d4 specifically, which black does, that uh, this is not so bad for them. Mm hmm. That's right, D Web. Hello to Alejandro on YouTube. Greetings, Alejandro. Uh, hello, Jacob, as well. Yeah. Saying it's fun to speak about someone playing the Sicilian, the Sicilian con. Jacob was also asking about speculation as to the openings in the match. Ooh, yeah, I don't know. Very hard for me to say. Um, I have not been keeping up on current opening trends all that much. And I think both Nepo and Magnus have a wide enough repertoire that I think legitimately it's going to be pretty hard to forecast what they're going to do. I mean, if you recall the 2018 World Championship match, one of the opening revelations of that match was Magnus employing the Sveshnikov Sicilian as his main weapon as black and being very successful with it. Uh, Caruana being unable to crack it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll see 14 Berlin draws. Uh, Yte, thanks for the game. So, yeah, I think just your one big mistake was playing E5. You know, E5 is not a move you want to pair with that dragon bishop because of the weakness of D6. So, usually black plays bishop D7 here. Uh, rook C8 on the way. That's all mainline stuff. Thank you for the game, though. Who's up next? Mustafa. Let's go. Good luck. Yeah, 14 bond cloud draws. <laughs> now, this might be a basic question, but I think it's worth asking. If one side gets out to a huge lead at the beginning and even is able to like win the match prior to the 14 games being played, the match just ends, right? Like they don't, they're not contractually obligated to play all 14 games. I'm pretty sure that's the case, but you never know because they change around the regulations sometimes in these tournaments. I can't imagine they're going to play like a world championship game when the result has already been decided. Okay, so we get kind of like a Smith Morrow by transposition, but White has wasted some time with Queen takes d4 and then back to uh, d1. And of course, White's not down a pawn, but <laughs> Smith Morrow esque. Style situation here, perhaps. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. First to seven and a half. Let's go here and stop White from castling. But I also do wonder like, one reason I'm asking is just the level of organization and, you know, the international media all the journalists, um, people involved in the event who are there, sponsors and whatnot. You know, everyone makes travel plans based on uh, these games taking place. So when you get towards the end of a match that's been decided, if it could end at any given time, like that creates logistical problems, right? So I, was, I always wonder about that aspect of it in an event as high level, the highest level as the world championship. Okay, let's go rook c8. Hey, John, how do you feel about the Bofinix system for white for a relative beginner? Thank you for the question, Eyes of the World. So I think you mean the Bofinix in the English? I would stay away from a system opening like that, personally. Not because the opening itself isn't good. It's, it's fine. But I, I do think it's better to play e4 when you're starting out, specifically. And... Try to avoid systems until you get experience in more mainline stuff. And then decide if you want to work in something like C4.
Will I visit the World Championship? Probably not. Actually, almost certainly not. <laughs> I have a vacation in December, early December. I'm taking with some friends. But uh, yeah, also some pretty arduous travel here from in the U.S. Going to Dubai. Hmm. So White's going to attack here. I'm really tempted to just take. I think taking is a good I good idea, actually. I mean, queen takes d7 looks scary, but kind of just one check, and then I sidestep. The rook's defended by the bishop. White can take with the bishop. Then I'm going to park the king on e7. It's actually going to feel as snug as a bug in a rug there. I am going to Mexico for vacation. What is my favorite opening with white? Hmm. I would say, this is going to be a weird answer, but I'm going to say the Tory attack. Named after Goldust Tory. I'm just kidding. That was a joke for my stream. Um, <laughs> the Tory attack because I've had some memorable games in it, and I like a lot of the ideas. It's relatively easy to digest as well. I'm not going to take the bishop yet, by the way. I'm just going to stop queen d7, and I think I'm going to try to insert this move before taking this guy. How would I describe my chess playing style? I would say controlled, strategic, logical. All those adjectives come to mind. Now, rook takes a5, I can take with check. Very important. Okay, so there, and white's going to try to eliminate my b2 pawn. That's fair. I feel like I might have some tactical trick here. Let me think about this. Here, take some sort of bishop f2, rook d1 type thing. I see a couple ideas. I just don't know if I can pull them off. You know what I'm going to try, though? I'm going to let white take my bishop. Can I just go there? There's probably only one way to defend this. I think it's bishop d5. Yeah, it kind of doesn't matter because white was so low. I was trying to style a little bit. Yep, thanks for the game. GG. Yeah, I think this queen takes d4, queen back to d1 approach is not so good for white. Just loses a little too much time. So usually if you're playing knight c3 like this, you're going to combine it with something like g3, bishop g2, or maybe knight f3, d4, knight e2, d4, try to duck back into an open Sicilian. Why not bishop f2? Well, I was looking at that in various positions, but the rook is always guarding it, right? So maybe I could do it. I was trying to figure out if I could play rook d1 somewhere. All right. Susaki, good luck. Hmm. Someone was asking about Karakhan, so let's play that. Hello, Brian on YouTube. Thank you, Nicola, by the way. Because you and Jerry are the best. Yeah, shout out to Chess Network. Uh, Valentin asking, have I worked with Gotham Chess? Uh, he's the biggest chess YouTuber now, and it seems like... Uh, feels like nobody in the community talks about him. Hmm. I see the exact opposite. <laughs> I see everyone talking about Gotham Chess. But no, I don't know Levy that well. I've talked to him a couple times. We haven't collaborated or uh, I've never played him over the board. Hello, Andy. I'm playing this solid variation, the Smyslav Karpa variation. It's taken play night out. And then I'm going to go Bishop G4 next. Okay, I'll take this one. I'm happy if I can get that bishop. Play queen d5, one of my favorite moves. <laughs> the Scandi influence. 
I don't know what I'm going to be for Halloween. Haven't decided yet. What's my prediction whether Levy makes Grandmaster? I think he certainly has a decent chance of it, but yeah, he has to figure out long term if making content while he's doing it makes sense because it probably doesn't. Mm, I guess I'll play f6. I want to control this square. This is debatable, though. I'm going to play f6 and go king d7. e6 does become a little bit weaker. Mm, yeah, no, I don't, I don't know Levy really at all, uh, aside from just like limited online interactions with him. He lives in New York. I live in the Midwest. I'm sure it's the type of thing like we know a lot of the same people, but I just don't really know him personally. He's also 10 years younger than me, so got to keep in mind there's an age gap there. Could I try the H4 slash tall variation of the Caro Advanced? Hello, Craig, by the way. Uh, yeah, that, that line, I have played it a little bit recently. I can try that, though, if I get a chance. Probably won't get a chance this stream, but you never know. Dress up as en croissant. Croissant. Okay, now I want to use my pawns here. So let's maybe play g5 to start. I'm going to push my pawns fairly aggressively, I think. Bishop g. Well, I don't know if I want to go h5 because h4 actually looks a little bit annoying. Maybe rook c8 to start. Let's just play something solid. Didn't I just answer that question, Dresdino? <laughs> Someone literally just asked that question. Okay. Yeah, h5 here, maybe bishop here. Let's do that. I think I got to play h5. It's thematic. Or I could take first and then do it. Although there's bishop f6. Let's, do, let's go here first. I feel like this is actually a pretty big problem for him. No problem, Jorginho. Yeah, I said solid, logical, strategic, exactly like Patrice said. Accumulating advantages. Ooh, problems. Watch the long-range diagonal moves. Yeah, the king is pretty useful here on d7. Absolutely. Guarding this, guarding c7 in a way. <laughs> Hello, Grant. I promise I won't say St. Louis. <laughs> I have been to Florida many times. Well, not a huge amount of times, but I was talking earlier about how I played the U.S. Open in uh, 2011 in Orlando. Mm, could just do this. Also, Bishop C2 if I really want to try to use my bishops effectively, but let's just take. Not much for white to do here. They're down a piece. Not a lot of counterplay either. Really no counterplay. Let's go here now. Look for the trade. Wants to take this pawn. Okay. Thanks for the game, Sasaki. So in this one, giving up the light square bishop early probably gives black a fairly easy game. Queen d5, and yeah, I got the bishop pair. So this is 
a move that you probably would never think to play without preparation. But one of the most challenging moves here for white is this move knight g5. You can see in the master's database, it's the most popular move. And there's a famous game where uh, Deep Blue beat Kasparov in the final round of their, I think it was like 1997 match, their second match. And there are traps here because if black kicks the knight away, h6, white has the move knight e6. And you can't take because of checkmate coming up. So I won't go down the rabbit hole of theory here, but knight g5 is considered one of the most challenging. And black has to watch themselves. And even if you do play like this, yeah, I just think you want to keep the light square bishop. It's, it's a bit too valuable in comparison to the knight. Thanks for the game. Okay, strut, good luck. Someone said on YouTube, hi from Montenegro. Thank you for tuning in. All right, what should I play here? Let's play, let's play d6. What if queen a5 after that knight move? Well, no queen a5, the, it, the dark square bishop would defend it for white. So the bishop on c1 helps defend. So I think white could just play bishop d2 there. Let's try to play for e5. We're playing this old Indian style. What do I think of the fact pre-moves and lead chess are instant? You know, I actually prefer some time being taken off the clock. I don't think pre-moves, uh, not counting against you, are, I don't know, like a logical thing. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. I think it should take at least point one, like chess.com does it. Any recommendations against the King's Indian defense? Ooh, so many lines you can play against the kid. I like the same-ish. I think the same-ish kind of cuts across White's plans rather nicely. Yeah, the old Indian is interesting. The computer really likes White in the old Indian, but in practice, it's never easy. I'm going to do this, even though I'm accepting double isolated pawns. These, these pawns control quite a bit of territory, especially my pawn on c6 is nice controlling here and here. And I like long-term that I have the dark square bishop. So let's think about this. Maybe rook over. Yeah, let's step out of this pin on the A file. And rook c2 is kind of an odd move, although it's, it's played to defend this. I feel like this queen might be a little bit lonely. If I could teleport my bishop to b3, that would be great. What do I want to do next? Let's go g6. I'm going to play bishop h6 and then bishop e6, most likely. Let's hit the rook. And I think white's going to have to go back here to keep b2 defended. Long term, I want to maneuver this knight. I mean, I'm even thinking about some maneuver like that. This is going to be uncomfortable for white. Oh. Wow, White sacrificed that. I think they saw Bishop takes d2, but just didn't want to move the rook. Okay. I'm going to be real patient here. I'll play h6 so I can play Bishop e6 without getting bothered. Can't draw arrows OTB without annoying your opponent. That is correct, yes. <laughs> It's why generally, if you're looking for max improvement and playing online, you should resist the temptation to draw arrows. Absolutely. Okay, this hits this and also this. <clears throat> I guess I'll play f5. Bishop f5, there might be g4, so I'll play pawn f5. does allow this, though. Take. Play king f6. We'll guard this pawn. Looks kind of aggressive, but 
I'm up in exchange. I don't see a whole lot that white is threatening here per se. So <clears throat> I think it's fine. Queen d6, offering a trade, and also b4 is kind of loose. No, I never tried chess boxing. All right, here, queen b6, here. If queen takes b4, white can play queen takes e5, so I'm not going to play that right away. e4 is probably just a good move. I'm going to do that. The knight doesn't have a lot of squares. Maybe rook d2 could be played, to be fair. Uh, oh, I actually didn't see that check. <laughs> That's an annoying check because now knight e5 is coming. So I should think here. The old queen a1. <laughs> Oh, I got to hurry, too. Hurry, hurry. Got to be careful. I almost blundered knight takes c6 there. So strut is making this complicated for me, as they should. Oh, blunder. Okay. Um, let's go here. I'm in a fight. I got to hurry. Suddenly these pawns. Oh my. These pawns are killing me. <laughs> Stop. Stop hurting me. You can queen now. I'm losing. Maybe not. Ah. Uh... <laughs> I was just talking about how I didn't want the leech as, uh Oh, I lost. Okay. <laughs> Good game, Strut. I lose for the third time in leech S plays. <laughs> I was talking about how uh, I didn't want the... If I could choose, I didn't, I didn't like the uh, point one to work. Or not work uh, in my opponent's favor, but the point one to... All right, point, point one should be the minimum that gets deducted for a pre-move. And in, in this situation, the only thing that could have saved me was infinite pre-moves. <laughs> good game, Strut. Yeah, I totally fell asleep at the wheel. And Strut came up with some good moves, like Queen A1 surprised me. I didn't see that coming at all. And that was a big problem in this position. And suddenly after, let's say right here, I mean, knight takes c6. This was not easy to contain the activity here. I was looking at stuff like rook takes c5, but it wasn't really working. Probably should have played queen f6, but at this point, I was trying not to flag. Those pawns were brutal. And actually, white could have queened right here. b8 queen. I think I'm just busted in this position. Let me check. Oh, rook d takes b6. That move keeps an advantage can lead to a pawn-up situation. <laughs> yeah, my, my uh, conversion was pretty poor here. But credit to Strut. They came up with some good moves. So congratulations. Well played. Ooh, this might have to be... Hold up. This might have to be the uh, Bond Cloud Horsey game. We got to do it. Especially dangerous against D4. It's possible I'm going to lose two games in a row. <laughs> yeah, well done once again, Strut. All right. Yeah, this is going to be tough. We'll see what happens against JCID. Ah, uh, I got to retreat my king. It's too hard to play without that. I mean, I can maybe play f6, but I think I need to retreat and try to work out of this. White's playing the London setup. Take the pawn and then the London setup. h4, all right, all right. Uh, let's go here. We'll attack, and I assume White's going to drop the bishop back here, here.
Hello, McTierfront. Asking if I have plans to visit Berlin one day. You never know. I've only been to Germany once, but it was on a layover, so it doesn't really count. I would love to come visit and see the uh, original location of one of the most boring variations in chess. Just kidding. I'm sure Berlin's great. <laughs> I would really look forward to visiting. Historic city. And actually, to be fair, the Berlin endgame is pretty interesting. It's just there are a lot of draw variations that have become popular at the highest level. I think the Berlin endgame itself is actually a pretty fascinating endgame. Oh, good idea, youthful purpose. I got to do that right now for youthful porpoise. I got to order my Chipotle. Let's go queen here. So I'm playing this like an England gambit, basically, which it is. <laughs> I played e5 on move one. An England gambit with king e7. All right, all right. Putting in my order now. Ready for pickup in 15 minutes. Looks good. Getting a chicken bowl. You guys want anything? Any chips, guac, burrito maybe? I'll put an order in for you guys. The caveat is you got to come to Minneapolis to pick it up. This is a good move. If I take, he takes with a queen. I think I kind of got to gamble with this move as much as I don't really want to play that. JCID is thinking a lot. Get you a taco. Put it in the fridge. I'll be there in about 12 hours. Burrito. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the issue because the knight can come to d5 now. I really want to do this, but that's, it's unsound. King d2. I'm not really seeing how to play that because my other knight is not participating as it should. All right, so we got to do this and allow knight d5. Okay, queen up. Oh, okay, I think it's okay to play this, but I just noticed knight g5. Fortunately, I can take on e5, I think. But this is, boy, this is sketchy. This is uh, hyper sketchy right now. Oh, man. Queen e4, queen g6. I'm going to try it. I don't know. Okay, white plays the queen back. That helps a little bit. I feel like I'm tiptoeing tiptoeing through a minefield here. I'm whistling past the graveyard. Yeah, there's there's a Good move here for white. I'm not going to say what it is. Just in case JCID happens to be stream sniping. Oh, he found it. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. The move I was thinking about was B5. Although F4 is probably pretty good too. Hold. B5 would have attacked my knight, which was in turn defending the E5 knight. Oh, but B5, maybe there's bishop A5. I don't know. Regardless. Oh, my queen. My poor queen is running out of squares. Bishop F4. I can try bishop F2. It's so disgusting, though. Knight F2, maybe. Hold up. I 
I don't even know what to do here. <laughs> this position is so bad. Let's try to confuse them. When in doubt, play for confusion. <laughs> Knight f7, I'm going to go here. Okay, they take that. Oh, long range diagonal move to the rescue. <laughs> and now I just got to play for a flag and hope I get it. I'm still, got, I'm still probably worse here. Bishop g5. All right, let's cut off the... Let's not get mated. No bishop c7 mate. <laughs> what a bad game. I mean, I, I know I'm playing the Bong Cloud, but uh, I feel like I should have been able to play that a little bit better. Strut has me reeling from the defeat. Okay, now this should be good, but that was super touch and go. I'm not getting mated, am I? Bishop check, king over. Whew. JCID, thanks for the game. Dare we look at the uh, engine eval? I don't know. Let me change this back. It is tradition that we play with the horsey set in the last game. I fear this is going to be like plus 15 for white somewhere around here. Okay, plus 8. Not bad. Not bad. Could be worse. Yeah, white played this well. I was thinking b5 here. It's towards the top. a4 is also good. My, my coordination is pretty whack here. Plus 20, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good good moves all here. I mean, I was trying to confuse my opponent, but my queen is just in a real bad way here. Ugh. Plus 12. Yeah, and just the old long-range diagonal move was missed by my opponent coming up. Rook d1 is gg, c3, rook c1. Plus 15. Uh, sorry, Andy Fa. Hopefully we can play sometime. Feel free to challenge me on my channel too when I'm doing viewer streams. You can never tune in. And even after I, I won the Rook in the corner, this is still pretty rough. It's almost checkmate even right around here. There are some checkmate themes. But yeah, fortunately here I was able to avoid Bishop C7 mate. I played Knight E5. And somehow got back in the game. But uh, JCID, hey, push me to the limit. Congratulations to Strut once again for beating me in the previous game. Hello, Augusto. Yeah, I'm not currently going for the Grandmaster title. I haven't been playing. I haven't played an over-the-board tournament in two years. But I was mentioning earlier in the stream, I might, uh, I might play the U.S. Masters. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, thanks, Defuser. We're going to raid someone. I'm not sure who that is. Thanks to the Leech S mods. Appreciate it. No joke. Also, Numeroid. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in today. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I'll see you next week for Leech S plays. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, feel free to check me out on my Twitch channel. It's just John Bartholomew. Or find me on YouTube. Also, John Bartholomew. We're going to raid Mercia Tulu. You guys take care. Thanks again. Bye, guys.